Support for this podcast and the following message come from Money Mind from Prudential, a podcast powered by your financial behavior. Hear insights from financial psychologists, experts, and more. Download and subscribe to Money Mind wherever you find podcasts and learn more at slate.com slash money mind. Hey, take Ask Me Another and more with you with the NPR One app. NPR One finds you the best from public radio and beyond. Election essentials, local stories, and your favorite podcasts. NPR One is ready to make a trip, waiting in line, or waiting for a friend so much better. Find NPR O-N-E in your app store now. And if you're working on your intern application, good news, the deadline has been extended to Sunday, November 6th. So just go to npr.org slash internship to apply. From NPR and WNYC, coming to you from the Bell House in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, it's NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia, Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. We have a great show for you. Four brilliant contestants are backstage visualizing future success while they wait to play our nerdy games, but only one will be our big winner. And our special guests are director Ty West and actor James Ranson. Their latest film is a Western called In a Valley of Violence. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but trivia was actually invented in the Old West. Wild Bill had a nerdy little brother named Mild Willie, and he told two gunslingers that they could settle the score with a trivia game. It unfortunately ended with a tie, so they had to shoot each other anyway. (laughs) One was dead, but the other one that was left alive got a Rubik's Cube. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's how the West was won. Let's get things started with our first two contestants. First up, Robin Stipe. You are visiting from Columbus, Ohio, and you're here for your bachelorette party. I am. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, And is this the entire bachelorette party, you coming on stage as a contestant? No, it started on Saturday night, and it's pretty much been rolling ever since. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, and how many more days in the bachelorette party? This is the final This is the final day. I go to sleep tonight, and then we leave tomorrow. Wow. Your opponent is Andrea Caballo, and you research how people use apps. Yeah, so I work at a media company, and my job is to kind of bridge the gap between the people who are building the apps, so tech, and the people who are going to want the information from those apps, so business. Okay, so what do people want? They just want to know what people clicked on. (laughs) That seems very simple. (laughs) That's that's it. it. Yeah, that's That's it. Just what's the top thing that people looked at? Okay, so what is the top thing people are looking at? It's whatever you put at the top of your app. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, you make humans sound so simple. (laughs) Okay, Robin, Andrea, the first of you who wins two of our games will move on to the final round at the end of the show. So let's go to your first game called Brush Up Your Shakespeare. This game was written by someone who studied Shakespeare's plays a long time ago, uh, but it since has forgotten almost everything about them. So let's go to Jonathan Colton for an example. Sure. If I said, I think this play was about some guys who all had the same first name, and their last names were Hudson, Thoreau, Ford, and Kissinger, and then Cavill came along, you would answer, Henry V. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Everyone in the room is stunned into silence. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to give that a minute to sink in. Yeah, you're not wrong. This is a hard game. <laughs> so buzz in when you know the answer. You're going to give us the name of the play. You don't have to give us the author. <laughs> Shakespeare. <laughs> um, and the winner will be one step closer to the final round at the end of the show. Here we go. Uh, I think this one was about the Roman Empire and what happened when a food court store uh, that sells orange drinks merged with America's third largest pizza chain. Andrea. Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar is correct, yes. (laughs) Et tu, food court? (laughs) I'm pretty sure this one is about a general who was tricked by that parrot from Aladdin into playing a frustrating board game with black and white pieces. Andrea. Othello. You got it. Yeah. 
I remember this one is about a meerkat <laughs> from Greece who spends too much time singing Hakuna Matata with his buddy Pumbaa. Robin. Time in a Bathins. Yeah. Wow. The uh, question I have is, how'd you know that? I mean, it's impossible. <laughs> that's impossible. <laughs> what? Okay. I was a drama major. Okay. Yeah, that, that's how I knew that. I wrote, no one knows this. <laughs> I think Seinfeld co-wrote this or something. Beatrice banters with Benedict about yada yada, and Hero dies from licking stamps on Claudio's wedding invitations. Robin. Much ado about nothing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal with stagecoach food? I don't know. <laughs> All right, this is your last clue. This one is about Queen Elizabeth II, Kate Middleton, and Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, and they're all happily married. Robin. The Merry Wives of Windsor. That is correct. <laughs> That's like the pre 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 precursor to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> Puzziger, Art Chung, how did our contestants do? All's well that ends well for Robin. She's one step closer to the final round. Let's check in with our contestants. Robin Stipe, you say that you work at the Cheers of banks. I do. Yes. That's possible, huh? Let's hear why a financial institution is the bar of our dreams, where everybody knows our name. We do uh, let people bring their dogs into the bank. Yeah. And we have a uh, monthly raffle for pet of the month. <laughs> <laughs> do you like, is there a bunch of mattresses where you put the money underneath? Like, this doesn't <laughs> sound... We're very secure. You're very secure. Yes. Yes. Okay, it sounds lovely. It sounds very lovely. Andrea Caballo, you say you love to travel, but it seems like you just like to travel to one place because you've been to Iceland three times. Yes. So why three? Um, well, the first time was on purpose just to Iceland. The, <laughs> yeah. the second the, time was a trick. Yeah. Uh, uh, the other two times we were just stopping, like for like a day oh, or two. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. then we went off to another place. What's your pie in the sky? Like, I really would just love to go to this place. Uh, I would love to go to Australia. Oh yeah, you could yeah. do that. Yeah. What What about Australia? Do you love? I love the I idea of emailing someone from the future or calling them. Oh, because you yeah. are a yeah right. You're like a day in a few hours in the future. Yeah. And so you can tell them what the future's like. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you should go there like early November. <laughs> Let's go to your next game. Robin, what is your favorite, like, as seen on TV product? Uh, that microwave omelet maker really kind of entranced me as a kid when I saw it on TV, mostly because I thought there was some fudging involved in the uh, footage that they showed you. And I was, I never bought it, but I was really curious to know if it actually worked. The, you mean you think like when they put it in and then they reopen the microwave? And that's... I, I think that they cut something out mm -hmm, in the middle mm -hmm. there. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably right. Yeah. How about you, Andrea? What's your favorite scene on television so product? My, my favorite one is a random one that, I've, that I saw maybe like three times on a random app where um, <laughs> basically the premise was nachos are way too messy for everyday life and their thing was, hey, here's a bride and she's trying to eat nachos and it gets all over her. And their answer to that was nachos and cheese in a pouch that you put in your microwave that you then eat with a fork. Hmm. <laughs> It sounds like a terrible solution in search yeah, of a not very right. real problem. <laughs> okay, so Robin, Andrea, you get to play one of our favorite games. It's called This, That, or The Other. We are going to give you a word, and you have to tell me which of three categories it fits into. And today's categories are Star Trek alien species, energy drink brands, and products sold on infomercials. So we're going to alternate back and forth. You don't need your buzzers to buzz in. Robin, you won the last game, so if you win this, you're going to the final round. Here we go. Robin, Lucozaid. I'm going to guess alien species. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Andrea, can you steal? Let's go with uh, energy drink. Energy drink is correct, yes. 
Uh, yeah, energy drinks have weird names. All energy drinks taste to me like they are made of like boiled down vitamins mixed with lasers or something. <laughs> Blech. All right, Andrea, Akamarian. Um, Star Trek alien species. That is correct, yes. Of course, you remembered them from episode 57, yes, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Robin, Floby. I'm going to guess energy drink. Sounds like it flows right through you. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Andrea, can you steal? Is it an infomercial? It product? is. Yes, it is a. Uh... But it was actually a vacuum with a blade in it that you would use to cut your hair, and the vacuum would vacuum up the cut hair at the same time. Oh my gosh. And that's what everyone used it for. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, grab it. Infomercial. Yes, that is an infomercial product. Can you guess what it does? It, oh, does it help you reach and grab things? You would think so, but it actually it helps you combine gerbils with rabbits. No. <laughs> um, Tired of combining gerbils and rabbits the old way? <laughs> <laughs> what a mess. You just see someone with pots? Ah! <laughs> All right, these are your last clues. Robin, Zorbies. Ooh, mm, I'm going to guess alien species. <laughs> I wish. I oh. wish they were. I'm sorry that is incorrect. Andrea, can you steal? Is it an energy drink? Oh, no. I no. It is a infomercial product. It's an absorbent towel that absorbs other towels. <laughs> All right, Andrea Bacchus D. Star Trek alien. Oh, I'm sorry that is incorrect. Robin, can you steal? Energy drink? Yes, it's an energy drink. <laughs> it is very popular in South Korea. Puzzleguru Archung, how did our contestants do? Congratulations, Andrea. You've tied it up. One game apiece. Whoa. So now it's time for a quick game three. I'm going to give you a category, and you'll have to go back and forth naming things that fall in that category. The first contestant to mess up, either by guessing incorrectly, taking too long, or repeating an answer, will be eliminated. You're going to have to buzz in to answer first. Here's your category. Ten cities in North America have hosted either the Summer or Winter Olympic Games. Name them. Robin, you go first. Atlanta. Atlanta is correct. Andrea. Um, Vancouver. Vancouver is correct. Back to Robin. Salt Lake City. That is correct. Back again to Andrea. Uh, Lake Placid. Lake Placid, also correct. Robin. Um, shoot. Give you three <laughs> seconds. Boston. No, I'm sorry. That is incorrect. Congratulations, Andrea. You're moving on to the final round. Coming up, we'll find out who will face off against Andrea in our final round at the end of the show. And if you are turned on by inventions, we've got a musical parody game that will make you scream Eureka. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. <laughs> Let's take a moment to thank and share a message from our sponsor, LearnVest. LearnVest is an online financial advice company focused on empowering people nationwide to make smart decisions with their money. If you want to know how aggressively to pay down your student loans, LearnVest can help with that. If you want to know how much you should put aside for saving, they can do that too. Or how much you should contribute to your retirement account. Yep, they're on it. They'll create a custom financial plan to answer those questions. Plus, they'll pair you with a financial planner to help you keep on track. To see a sample plan and get a $50 credit, go to learnvest.com slash another. This is Ask Me Another, NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. I'm Jonathan Colton, here with puzzle guru Art Chung. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. Before the break, our contestant Andrea won her way to the final round at the end of the show. We're going to find out a little later who she will face off against. But first, it's time for a game we call 
mystery guest. A stranger is about to join us on stage. We have no idea who this person is or what makes them special, but our puzzle guru, Art Chung, does. That's right. You and Jonathan will have to ask yes or no questions to figure out our mystery guest's secret. Mystery guest, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Marie Carter, and I have a job that takes me all over New York City. So Jonathan and Ophira, your job is to figure out what her job is. Ophira, you get the first question. Okay. Does your job involve the subway? No. Okay. That's what I thought might take you all around New York City. When you are going all around New York City, are you primarily in a vehicle, or is it important for your work that you be outside? Not in a vehicle. Not in a vehicle. vehicle. Okay. Does your job mean spending a lot of time outside? Yes. Okay. Is it important for your job as you're going around New York City outside and not in a vehicle? (laughs) You're looking at things. Yes. Uh huh. Oh wow! See, good one. I eliminated four <laughs> senses. That's right. Oh, I'm so glad your job isn't smelling. Um, are you on foot? Yes. Okay. You're on foot, looking at things. What could you be looking at? Are you looking at uh, things that have a heartbeat? No. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> So just to be clear, you're not looking at people or anything like that. You're looking at something else. But clearly you're not looking at buildings. Yes. Oh, yes, you are looking at buildings. But what about them? Oh, no. Are you, like, inspecting buildings? You, you're, uh, no. 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 Are you a tour guide of some sort? Yes. Oh, wow, good job. Ah. All right, so you're a tour guide and you're showing people things about New York. Are you a tour guide uh, doing something, you know, sort of like, this is where particular television shows were shot? No. Okay. Are they tours of something that is historical in nature? Yes. Does it have to do with New York history? Yes. Are they ghost tours? Yes. What? Really? Really? So all the people on the tour are ghosts? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. So Marie is a licensed tour guide with a company called Burrows of the Dead, which gives spooky walking tours of New York City. So Marie, how did you get started giving these tours? So I grew up in Scotland, and uh, my father was a tour guide. And then I moved to New York City. And a couple of years ago, I heard that a company called Burrows of the Dead was doing tours in Brooklyn. And I thought, this is a great way to learn the history of an area, uh, while also hearing some of the creepier stuff. Yeah. And then I suggested doing a tour in Astoria, where I'm now living, and it took off from there. Can you give me, like, a creepy little factoid? Uh, sure. Since we're at the Bell House yeah. in Park Slope, Perfect. Uh, I will give you a ghost story of uh, the Park Slope. There is a place called the Chiclet Mansion. It was owned by someone who invented the chiclet. And the family went away on vacation and left the servants behind. And they were the first place in Brooklyn to have an elevator. And they told the staff not to play around in the elevator, but the staff wouldn't listen to them, and they ended up getting trapped in the elevator, and they perished there. And people say that they can hear the voices of the staff yelling for help, trying to scrape their way out of the elevator. That is totally weird and creepy. creepy. Yeah. (laughs) Also, I hate when my staff dies in my elevator. (laughs) It's such a pain in the neck. You gotta get a whole new elevator. It's like you gotta get a whole new staff. It's a whole thing. Wait, I have a question. Do you believe in ghosts? I'm something of a skeptic. I believe that there is something out there. We just haven't quite figured out what it is yet. Hmm. Have you ever encountered what you think is or was a ghost? Yes. When I was staying in Savannah, I was asleep. And about six in the morning, I felt something scratching the back of my neck. Yeah. And I was staying in a hostel by myself. And when I turned around, there was no one there. At first, I thought I was dreaming, but the scratching still went on. And I was fully awake and no one there. You are totally creeping me out right now. Yeah. And this must be your busy time. 
very busy at this time of year. Fantastic. Yes. I love, I, I mean, I would love to take a tour, find out some stories that scare me more than the stuff I already know about the town with the living. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for our mystery guest, Marie Carter. <laughs> Let's meet our next two contestants. First up, Tarek Koch. You are a computer programmer. Supposedly, you ran a language teaching site from a computer in your closet. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that doesn't sound uh, (laughs) weird at all. Uh Is it the same server Hillary Clinton used for her (laughs) emails? I guess the same idea. Same idea? Okay. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Same idea. (laughs) In that it was a server. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. a server in a Same closet. Same kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Same general idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was this language teaching site? What, what do you mean by that? Originally, it was flashcards to help me uh, learn Turkish. Oh, I was, I was okay. trying to learn Turkish. Yeah. I built it for that, and then I eventually made it for other languages, too. I was just like, well, why don't I just make a website of this and see if people use it and other places? Pe- people use they it? They did, yeah. I could see people in different countries using it. Sounds yeah. fun. <laughs> Your opponent is Colleen Selsor. Now, you design children's clothing for a kid's clothing subscription startup. Yes, I do. Here's a weird fact about you. You've noted that your body is impervious to the amount of cheese you eat. Yeah, Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's true. Okay. I'm pretty gross. Um, (laughs) (laughs) One day I ate an entire block of cheese in less than 24 hours, and the next day I ate an egg and cheese sandwich, and I got a piece of cheese stuck to my shirt, and I had to walk around all day with, like, a badge of cheese shame. (laughs) Yeah, my friends have also caught me, like, on the subway late at night with, like, a block of cheese in my purse. (laughs) <laughs> I really like cheese I just want to point out These are the things you tell us <laughs> Colleen, what's your go-to subway cheese? <laughs> yeah, a sharp cheddar yeah. A sharp cheddar, yeah You can't really yeah. go wrong with a sharp no. cheddar In a public? Hard, no, always a sharp cheddar A hard cheese survives the, the warm commute <laughs> You don't want a brie in your purse No, that, no. that would get funky yeah. You don't do a brie on a D-train? That's not your kind of <laughs> oh, thing? Oh, a D-train, sure Yeah, a D-train, that's All right, remember, Tarek and Colleen, the first of you who wins two of our games will move on to our final round at the end of the show. Let's go to your first game. Uh, Tarek, what is something you would like to invent as an inventor yourself? (laughs) Well, I I actually, I used to be a patent examiner. You have a lot of talent. And and (laughs) I remember we saw a patent for, uh, it was like a resurrection burial tomb. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it, it, it was like at the South Pole, so it didn't really need cooling and all that. So uh, I think if I could actually invent that thing, that'd, that'd be a pretty cool thing to invent. Uh, just for those of us <laughs> that <laughs> might not be familiar with uh-huh. a resurrection burial uh-huh. tomb, yeah. uh, what is that exactly? Uh, well, according to the illustrations on the application, it, you know, a lot of skeletons involved in a nuclear reactor. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, what does it do? Uh, I guess it resurrects you if you. <laughs> if you Sounds die. like a great yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so too. <laughs> uh, Colleen, what is something you would like to invent? Mine's not as um, Halloweeny. Okay, <laughs> that's the nicest way to say that. I think if I could invent um, packing tape that didn't make the awful packing tape sound. That's oh what I yeah. Think. Right, that like screeching final, like the kind of thing you would put on your resurrection tomb. Mm-hmm. And, right, <laughs> to make sure it's shut. All right, we have a very sexy musical parody game for you. It's set to the tune of Let's Get It On. So, Jonathan Colton, get it on. Yeah, I'd love to get it on. Thank you. <laughs> this game is called Let's Turn It On. I'll be singing about famous people who invented or discovered something. So buzz in to identify the person that I'm singing about. You don't need to name the invention. The winner will be one step closer to moving on to the final round at the end of the show. You ready? Okay, here we go. I've been really trying, baby Trying to send you this message for so long And if you hear dots and dashes Come on, tap my key 
Let's turn it on. Tarek. Uh, Morse. Samuel Morse, that's correct, inventor of the telegraph. Yeah. It's just carbonized cotton with such light to give. Lots of what's there, sugar. Since I made this thing, we can see after dark now. Tarek. Uh, glow in the dark? I don't know. There's I, no one named I, Glow yeah. in the Dark uh, that I know of. <laughs> I know. It's <laughs> an excellent guess, though. Colleen, do you know the answer? Night Vision Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Night Vision Man. Inventor of night vision. Uh, we were looking for Thomas Edison. Uh. <laughs> oh, light bulb. You yeah. jumped, jumped a few inventions ahead of what we were looking for. There's nothing wrong with me Showing you, baby, no, no How to burn your CDs and keep all your songs iTunes Q, oh baby. Colleen. Steve Jobs. You got it, Steve Jobs. Yeah. I ain't gonna write it. I'm just gonna press. Gonna print a Bible. Add them, switch them, set them, move my letters. Move them all night long. Hey, I... let's turn it on. Colleen. See Gutenberg? <laughs> did you, wait, 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 wait. Did you, yeah. did you just <laughs> did you say, did you say Steve Gutenberg? I said uh, Gutenberg. <laughs> <laughs> I said it with a German accent. Colleen, you know we're recording this, right? We can easily <laughs> find out what you said. Yes, Gutenberg is correct. <laughs> Johannes mm, Gutenberg. No. no, no, his friends called him Steve. Steve, <laughs> Steve for short. <laughs> you know it's elementary. Come on, Pierre, baby. Get the radioactivity out. You want me to explode? Well, let's turn it on. Tarek. Curie? Curie, that's right. Marie Curie. <laughs> Discoverer of radium and polonium. And then in a weird uh, dark story, right, she died because of exposure to radiation. Radiation and poisoning. Sexism. And sexism. <laughs> <laughs> This is your last clue. If a boulder blocks you, I can move it. It's gonna come down with nitroglycerin to give us all good feelings. I'm gonna sponsor surprises, give them out in Stockholm. Tarek. Nobel. Alfred Nobel, that's right. Inventor of dynamite. Art Young, how did our contestants do? It was a close game, but Tarek, you're one step closer to moving on to the final round. Next, we've got a trivia game called One Named Wonders. I'm going to read you a sentence containing a bunch of words that have something in common. They're all one-word titles of songs performed by a one-named musician. Puzzle Guru Archung, give us an example. So if I said, this Brit's daydreamer voice would be a good remedy should the sky fall, you'd answer Adele, because daydreamer, remedy, and Skyfall are all one-word songs by the one-named artist Adele. Okay, so buzz in to answer. Tark, you won the last game, so if you win this, you go to the final round. Colleen, you need to win this or your toast. Cheese toast? Cheese toast. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Here we go. A halo seems to grace this diva. Her fans still listen long after the formation of Destiny's Child. Colleen. 
Beyonce. That is right. This one named singer's work includes many diamonds under a wide umbrella of collaborators. Colleen. Rihanna. Yes, exactly. Rihanna. I know my ladies. Would you believe this woman with a sunny disposition is setting off sirens in the decades since her variety show? Tarek. Sharon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is your last clue. It's no secret why fans continue to cherish this talent whose music will always be in vogue. Tarek. Madonna? Yeah, Madonna is correct. <laughs> all right. Puzzle R. Chung, how did our contestants do? They're all tied up in this game, so Whoa. here is your tiebreaker question. If you've been alive these last few years, you should know this unstoppable singer who's now rich enough to buy herself any chandelier. Colleen. See ya. That is correct. All right, we're tied one game apiece, so it's time for a quick game three. I'll give you a category, and you go back and forth naming things in that category. The first one to mess up by guessing incorrectly, repeating an answer, or taking too long will be eliminated. Buzz in to answer first. Your category, name the nine most popular seasonal greeting card occasions as determined by units sold in the U.S. according to the Greeting Card Association trade group. Tarek. Valentine's Day. That is correct. Number two, Colleen. Uh, Mother's Day? Mother's Day is number three, correct. Tarek. Christmas. Christmas is number one. 1. 1.6 billion cards. Colleen. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, number eight. Tarek. Easter. Easter is number six. Colleen. Father's Day. Father's Day is number four. We have three more to go. Tarek. Mother's Day. Ooh, you, oh, you said, said that already. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Tarek, I'm afraid we have to say goodbye to you. Congratulations, uh, Colleen. You're moving on to the final round. It's settled. Our finalists are Andrea and Colleen. They'll face off in the final round at the end of the show. And not to sound like a broken record, but if you can hit the high notes when it comes to finely tuned trivia, come chime in and be a contestant. Go to amatickets.org. It's time to face the music. Coming up, we have director Ty West and actor James Ransom from the Western in a Valley of Violence. And we'll find out if the Ask Me Another stage is big enough for the both of them. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. <laughs> If you have ever wondered what podcast should I be listening to, The Big Listen is ready to help. On NPR's newest podcast, host Lauren Ober introduces you to podcasts you may have never heard of and also gives you the inside scoop on shows you already love, like the one you're listening to right now. So when you want something new, find The Big Listen on the NPR One app and at npr.org slash podcasts. This is NPR's Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton, here with puzzle guru Art Chung. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. Soon we'll find out which of our contestants, Andrea or Colleen, will be today's big winner. But first, it's time to welcome our special guests. Their new film is called In a Valley of Violence. Please welcome director Ty West and actor James Ranson. Thank Welcome you. to Ask Me Another. Thanks, Thanks for having, having us. us. Pleasure. Now, actually, we're going to talk about your new project in a moment, but first, how did you two meet? You uh, want to do this? James? No, you, I'll hear your story first. If it's <laughs> All true. right. Yeah. We're going um, to hear your The truth version. will lie somewhere in between. Yeah, so I got, it was many years ago, I think in late, I don't know, it was like 2008 or 2009, and I got a call being like, hey, there's a director that wants to have a general meeting with you. And he lived in New York, and he's like, well, he wants to meet at Cafe Mogador. And I was like, well, that's where I eat breakfast every day, so that sounds fine. And then um, 
I met him, and then he explained to me how he was very unhappy with the movie he did, so he took his name off of it. And I was like, all right, I want to work with this person. Okay, so you saw him as a little bit of a rebel who had a lot of integrity in his work, and you thought... I it, was, lo- it wasn't even the rebel, it was the integrity. It was, it was the integrity. Yeah, I just, I'll, I'll back an artist over the money any day of the week. Nice! Ty, does that uh, coincide nicely? That sounded great. I'm going to say yeah. that that was exactly how it went down. And, Can you say uh, something yes. nice about me, please? Um... <laughs> <laughs> and he was great, and Mogador was really great, too. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, he was, I was a fan of, of his work, and we met, and then we kind of stayed in touch. We became friends, like you said, and now I wrote uh, the role in In a Valley of Violence f- uh, specifically for him. Oh, nice. And uh, off we went to make the movie, so it worked out. Ty, as someone who's written and directed many horror movies like The Innkeepers, The House of the Devil, can you still be scared by a horror movie? Very rarely. Um, but no, I mean, every once in a while there's a movie that's pretty cool, but I've seen a lot of movies, and, and when you make movies, you start to, I think a lot about how they're making it. So, right. But if a movie scares me, um, that means it's doing something that I can't quite figure. It's sort of like if you were like a magician and a magic, another magician, you're like, ah, you just put it in the, th-. but then if you do one and you don't know how they did it, you're like, huh. And that's, you know, <laughs> um, so I'm always looking for that, like, huh, but it doesn't happen as often as, I, as I'd like. So your version of uh, blood curdling screaming is you going, huh? That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Now, I, uh, I was watching a video where you talked about the movie that uh, inspired you to get into filmmaking one of them is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes, that's true. Which is my favorite movie of all time. It's a great movie. Uh, why did that inspire you? I don't know. It's just it was a movie that my my parents had taped off on VHS off of like TBS, you know, <laughs> yeah. with like the commercials in it. And I had watched it a thousand times and it was I think it was the first movie that really made me like I didn't think about making movies when I was thinking about that movie, but it was just was the first movie that got me like super into. It. I was like movies are awesome. That started sort of like the snowball rolling which led to being obsessed with the video store and I was telling someone earlier today we had a, a video store called Cinema Video in Wilmington, Delaware for and it was arranged by directors, which is like so pointless in Wilmington, oh, Delaware. Yeah, right. So, um but like good effort and I would go in there and they had 5 for 5 Fridays where you could get 5 movies for 5 bucks and you keep them for 5 days. And so that's all I would do and, and I, th- I just got very obsessed and that's sort of how my how I got into things but Raiders of the Lost Ark was the first like I was obsessed with Indiana Jones yeah yeah and then with the subsequent uh, Indiana Jones movies yeah because I one time I was at school and I mentioned Indiana Jones and to some other kid was like yeah like Temple of Doom and I was like what's that and he was like that's the other movie and I was like what other mo-? because <laughs> it was my favorite thing in the world and I was like what do you mean there's another movie? Mm-hmm. And then I started to think, like, did my parents keep this from me or did they just not know? And w- I don't know which one would be worse. Um, anyway, <laughs> later that day I saw it. It was great. Monkey Brains, the whole thing. Still think it's a great movie. <laughs> my favorite of the series, actually. Yeah, my first two, I think, were Back to the Future and Top Gun as VHS, which explains my entire acting career right now. <laughs> I think in retrospect, when I think those, about my influences. Those were, that's what inspired you to get into acting? I think so. Uh, I mean, it's like one of those things. It's like, is that the, was that the psychic impression that led me to do this? You know, <laughs> as I retroactively look back on the whole thing. Right. Well, I mean, most of our listeners know you from a lot of HBO shows, The Wire, Generation Kill. Yep. Treme, all David Simon creations. Yes. yes. What's going on there with you two? I guess nothing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> making a new show. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We have, a, we have a very similar sense of humor. Self-deprecating with a side of intellectual elitism. <laughs> Sounds about right. That, I feel like that describes HBO in a <laughs> lovely way. When you first started uh, getting booked for projects, I don't know what your first moment where you were like, yeah, I'm going to be doing this full time forever. I had done The Wire. I know that some indie movies and then I was playing in bands for a while and then I had some personal problems, <laughs> drugs for a while. <laughs> and, um, and I remember I got cast in Generation Kill and I had to go to Africa and I was going to live there for about a year. Mm-hmm. And like, I was like, oh, this will be cool. And then I got to set And they handed me a call sheet, and I was number two on it. And I was like, someone made a mistake, right? That's what I thought. I was like, I don't, this is too much responsibility for me. And I literally, it occurred to me in that moment that this is my job. Yeah. (laughs) Very good. And I guess you uh, lived up to the responsibility. Yeah. (laughs) Still trying. (laughs) Still trying. Ty, now you direct and edit 
many of your projects. All, yes. And so when you are directing, are you looking at it from the point of view of editing later, or are you just directing and going, I'll figure it out later? More of the former. To me, it's like writing, directing, editing. For me, it's yeah. just like filmmaking. It's sort of the same thing. You kind of think of an idea, and then you write it down so that other people can understand your idea, and then you direct it because that was the goal, and then you kind of saw it in your at least i saw it in my head beforehand so but also i've made a lot of small movies so it's a way to be economical and to be able to shoot like i just need this this and this and they'll go together but i'll shoot this just in case i'm wrong now if you were given free reign you know whatever thousands of millions of gazillions dollars and you could hire it out which one would you give up Oh, well, with that kind of money, I wouldn't have to. But, uh, you know, they're all, <laughs> just, all I mean, they're all really traumatic in their own right. So everyone, <laughs> it's like the thing is when you're writing, you're like, oh, I hate writing. I wish I was directing. And then when you're directing, you're like, if only I was just back writing where there wasn't everybody right. screaming at me. And then when you're editing, you're thinking like, oh, I, why did I think I want to do this? I wish I was back. on. So it's just a constant grass is greener thing. So if I farmed it out to somebody yeah. else, I would just be like, why did I not do it myself? <laughs> so it's a no, there's too much self-hatred for me to ever get through this. Yeah, I just have Dude, to keep just, making movies. Can you answer the question? No. Which <laughs> one will you give up no. for the billions of dollars? I won't do it. This is the problem with integrity. Yeah. 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 Comes at a cost. You made a huge mistake. <laughs> that is true. Let's talk about your new project, In a Valley of Violence. Uh, Ty, In a Valley of Violence is a departure for you genre-wise, but sure. I can imagine that there are some crossover. But why did you want to write a Western? Well, I had made a movie called The Sacrament that was a movie that was like really all, it was a heavily based in realism. It was a, like a fake documentary trying to be real. It was using a real brand, a real tragedy. All the violence in that film it was a horror movie, but it was trying to, it wasn't like escapism. It was really confrontational, really tragic. It, it essentially was a real bummer to watch because it was like really brutal. <laughs> um, and that was kind of the goal. And then when that was done, I didn't want to do anything having to do with realism. I wanted to do traditional cinematic and and that to me was a western so i had an idea for one and i went and i met i came to new york and i met ethan hawk and i pitched him the idea for the movie and he liked it and i said i'm gonna go home write the script and i'll send it to you the day you wrap and if you don't like it we never have to talk about it again but if you do like it let's make this movie yeah and uh, so i went home and frantically wrote the script and i sent it to him and then the day after he wrapped he was like i dig it let's do it uh and what makes a western a western other than cowboys and setting i don't know I and mean, there's a, there's something kind of cool about these sort of traditional archetypes of cinema. And I think it's about individualism. I think it's about exploration and whatnot. All these answers are going to get more pretentious as they go That's on. Okay. Um, <laughs> go on. No, I, I, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's different for every person. But I think, I mean, I think individualism is a big part of it. If you lived in uh, the Old West, uh, what would your job be? I would be the madam. That's what the job I would uh. <laughs> James figured it out immediately. I thought he was going to go like the sheriff or something, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I'd probably be some I'd live out in a weird cabin somewhere in the middle. I'd be a weird hermit person, probably. <laughs> a recluse. Just somewhere in the woods, thinking deep thoughts. <laughs> right. The, the, a western takes uh, place. Oh, you're going. A... You're going for crazy prospector. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my role. Show me coffee, and you're yeah. like, this is mud. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Their new film is In a Valley of Violence. Let's have a big hand for Ty West and James Ransom. Are you guys ready for an Ask Me Another Challenge? Yes. Yes, let's okay. do it. So, in the spirit of the Western, you two will face off in an Ask Me Another showdown. So here are the rules. Jonathan, Colt, and I will give you clues to an answer with the word West in it. So, for example, if I gave you the clues, graduation... Beyonce had the greatest video of all time. Rapper. Kanye, Kanye West. I'm sorry, I thought That's I had That's exactly the right. You got it. Here we go. Dulé Hill, 1999 through 2006. Walking and talking. Aaron Sorkin. Ty. The West Wing. The West Wing is correct, yes. I'm not a big TV guy. <laughs> Just because it wasn't a David Simon yeah. show. <laughs> Touche, my friend. Here's your next one. Budget, open seating, tie. Southwest Airlines, you are yeah. correct. See, you've spent some time oh, in the old Southwest. So much, so much time on open seating Southwest. <laughs> All right, here's your next one. Fandy Newton, Androids. Dude, <laughs> sorry. I almost didn't do it, because, it, but it's Westworld. Ty West, the answer is Westworld. Pillow, ice bucket, occupancy rate, 
Maid service. James. Best Western? Best Western, that's correct. Well, thanks for throwing me that softball. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah. All right, this one's a little harder. Okay. okay. Lowercase font, statement mirrors, ombre mercury vases, mid-century lighting. James. West Elm. Why, you are correct. Uh, Do you enjoy that store? Don't I look like a shabby chic guy to you? <laughs> you do. <laughs> the end of Back to the Future 2. Oh. Yellow and black. No bank account required. Telegram. Ty. Western Union. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, I was right on top of that one. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? This is your last clue. Anita. Romeo and Juliet. Stephen Sondheim. Sharks and Jets. James. West Side Story. That is correct, yes. Puzzleger Archung, how did our esteemed guests do? They both did amazing. Ty, you won the game, but congratulations, you both win Ask Me Another Rubik's Cubes. Ah. Uh, uh. Let's have a big hand for Ty West and James Ransom. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's time to crown our big winner. Let's bring back our finalists, Andrea, who wants to visit Australia so she can email people from the future. And Colleen, who carries blocks of cheese in her purse. Puzzleger Archung, take it away. Andrea and Colleen, your final round is called Home Improvement. In this round, every answer will contain an item you would find in a home improvement store. So if I said he's the rapper who was too legit to quit, you'd say MC Hammer, as in a hammer. We're playing this round like a penalty shootout. You'll each get the same number of questions. The contestant who scores the most points will be our big winner. And your prize is an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube, signed by Ty West and James Ranson. We flipped a coin backstage, and Andrea, you are going first. Andrea, he's a Jamaican sprinter who's the fastest man on earth. Usain Bolt. Correct. <laughs> Colleen, he's a 2016 primary challenger to Hillary Clinton. Um, not MC Hammer. I'm sorry, we were looking for Bernie Sanders. Oh, a Sander. okay. A Sander. Back to Andrea. It's the full name of the young protagonist in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Charlie... No, yes, Charlie... Bucket. Correct. <laughs> Colleen, it's a 1940 Disney film with animated visuals set to classical music. Fantasia? That is correct. Fan is what we're looking for. Oh. Andrea, it's a baseball pitch that breaks in the opposite direction of a curveball. A breaker? No, I'm sorry. We're looking for a screwball. Colleen, a Christmas ballet scored by Tchaikovsky. Nutcracker. That's right. Back to Andrea, an industrial rock band founded by Trent Reznor. Nine Inch Nails. Correct. Colleen, he plays Frodo in Lord of the Rings. Um, Elijah Wood. That's right. We're at the halfway point, and the game is tied at three points each. Andrea, in a bra, it's the thin piece of metal that helps with support. Underwire. That is correct. <laughs> Colleen, it's someone who competes in foil, saber, or ape competitions. Mixed martial artist? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, we're looking for a fencer. Oh. Those are all types of fencing. Andrea, the half-human, half-vampire played by Wesley Snipes. Shaft. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm sorry, no. we're looking for Blade. No. Colleen, it's the startup company featured in the show Silicon Valley, named for a folktale about a man who exterminated rats. The Pied Piper? Correct. Andrea, in the book of Genesis, it's a pathway linking Earth to Heaven. Jacob's Ladder. Correct. Colleen, in the original Pokemon Game Boy game, it's one of the three starter Pokemon, along with Squirtle and Charmander. Bulbasaur. That's right. The score is tied. You have one question left. Andrea, it's a painful condition that affects some people who have had their wisdom teeth removed. I'm going to say shingles, but that's not it. 
No, I'm sorry that you were looking for a dry socket. Colleen, if you get this one right, you're our winner. It's an infection that may cause a painful rash for adults who once had chicken pox. Shingles. That is correct. <laughs> Congratulations, Colleen. You won. Congratulations, Colleen. And that's our show. Ask Me Another's Puzzle Guru is Art Chung. Hey, my name anagrams too, Narc Slug. Our house musician is Jonathan Colton. Val Jolta Cannon. Our puzzles were written by Sean Kennedy, David Letzler, and senior writers Kyle Beakley and Greg Lightman. Ask Me Another's produced by Mike Katzeff, Travis Larchuk, Julia Melfi, Denny Shin, Ramel Wood, and our intern Camila Salazar, along with Steve Nelson and Anya Grunman. We are recorded by Damon Whittemore, Noriko Okabe, and Nate Kinsella. Ask Me Another was created by Eric New- and Jesse Baker. We'd like to thank our home in Brooklyn, New York, the Bell House. Hot Heel Blues. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm her ripe begonias. Ophira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. Hey, it's Ophira Eisenberg here. Now, I know if you made it to this point in the podcast, you are a fan of our show. Thank you so much. So, why don't you do us a favor and rate us on iTunes? Or better yet, leave us a review. Your support helps other people find our podcast. Thank you. Next time on Ask Me Another, we've compiled some of our favorite TV-themed segments into one episode and stumped some contestants along the way. Do you watch a lot of television? Well, I thought I did, but yeah. apparently <laughs> not nearly enough. You're wasting all your time in grad school. <laughs> So join me, Ophira Eisberg, for NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Games, and Trivia.